Tongue depressors. <laughs> and we have them here for all the ladies. If you raise your hand to get your tactical self-defense tongue depressor, you can have one to protect you. So that when you leave here tonight, go out into the parking lot or on your way home, you will have a means of protecting yourself. Now sometimes the gentlemen want to take one home to their wives. So don't be ashamed if you want one to take home to your wives or something that has you can raise your hand and we'll give you one too. Or you can get them at the table back there on your way out. It's true, you can go to it. And it, the website is listed right here on the tongue press if you want to check that. The website is listed on it. Okay, we're also encouraged at the bottom of that page to use our imaginations. We may be able to think of an alternative and, well, I use my imagination. And I believe I prefer a 9mm or 45 to... <laughs> you know, in the, all of the other states that have passed a right to carry laws, we keep hearing the same questions over and over again. And one of the questions that keeps coming up is, won't the police protect me? And Sheriff Perez has presented part of the problem with that, with being understaffed, underpaid, they can't be everywhere at all times. And even if they could be, in Castle Rock versus Gonzalez, the Supreme Court ruled that police have no constitutional obligation to protect individuals, that overall their function is to keep the peace and also to investi investigate the crimes, and help in the conviction of the, the perpetrators that, that commit those crimes. Police officers are not bound by law to protect us. Even if they were, even if they were bound by law, bless their hearts. And thank you to Sheriff Perez. Our police officers are very dedicated to their jobs and they do the best they can for our communities, but they cannot be everywhere every minute. And even if they're just minutes away, when you are the target of a violent crime, seconds count. Not far from here, there was a situation where the police arrived just two minutes after a 911 call was made. But by the time they arrived at the Tenley Park dress shop, five women had been brutally murdered. A policeman was in that parking lot when the 911 call came in. Even he couldn't get there in time. And I think about that officer. And I think about how difficult that must be for him to know that he was there and even he could not get there in time to keep that crime from happening. The only way anybody <clears throat> could have is if someone inside that store had had the means to protect themselves with something besides a hair comb or gagging themselves. The goal of right to carry is not to be a cowboy, it's not to be a cowgirl, it's not to show how tough we are. The goal of right to carry is to stay alive until the police arrive. Another question that we keep hearing is, won't more guns cause more crime? No. Violent crime has gone down in every state that has passed a right to carry law. Records show that the higher the existing crime rate at the time the law is, uh, it becomes in, goes into effect, the greater the drop in violent, um, a violent crime. In Michigan, 2001, when they passed their right to carry law, the attorney general was a lady named Jennifer Granholm, and she was against it. And she did not want to see right to carry passed in the state of Michigan. She went on to become governor <clears throat> and is now governor of the state of Michigan. When she was elected, she was asked, will you work to repeal the right to carry law, the concealed carry law in your state? And she said, no. No, there's no reason to. Because the people of Michigan have proven that it works. That all of her fears were unfounded. All of the things that she was concerned about did not happen in her state. 
They have not happened in any of the other states. There was a sheriff, Oliver Boyer in Missouri, said that licenses in his state have been issued to young and old men and women of every economic status, and all of his fears have been proven unfounded. And even in the wild, wild west, where all those states already have right to carry, it hasn't turned out to be the wild, wild west. Another thing I hear, and a lot of times I hear this from women, and that is, I'm not really comfortable with the idea of people walking around carrying guns. Well, how many of you travel outside the state of Illinois on business? Vacation out of state? <coughs> travel out of state to visit family? Okay. What a lot of folks don't, un don't realize is that when you travel outside the bounds of the state of Illinois, you are driving along with, shopping with, eating in restaurants with, going to sporting events with in a lot of states, with people who are carrying a firearm for personal defense. You don't see it in most cases, you don't know it, and is it a problem? No, it is not. And so while we're here in Illinois, we've been sheltered from uh, the scary thing of people carrying firearms for self-defense. When we travel outside the state of Illinois, it's common. A lady that's ready to go to work in the morning, she has her purse, she has her cell phone, her car keys, and her yeah. personal defense gun. As uh, Sheriff Perez pointed out, the Illinois Sheriff's Association supports a right to carry law in Illinois, and they overwhelmingly passed that resolution uh, just a, a little over a year ago. Are Illinois citizens somehow less capable, less intelligent, less trustworthy? Are we less responsible in the citizens in the rest of this country? No, we are not. What can we do about it? What can we do about this? I encourage each and every one of you to get involved. Please, stop by the tables back here. Before you leave tonight, join Illinois Carry. Join the Illinois State Rifle Association, Second Amendment Sisters, whatever group that you feel like you connect with. Join that group tonight. Leave your contact information on the sign-up sheets at the back so that we can keep you informed of other meetings like this, we, so we can keep you informed of when phone calls need to be made to legislators, so that we can keep you informed when we need to be out there working for candidates that support the right to carry. Go home, put your state senator and your state representative in your fast dial, what do you call it? speed dial, put them in your speed dial on your